you will recall from part one of this video that we finished by looking at rule 11 and said that this just controls which rule applies to which crossing situation. We're going to do these rules in a different order because the principle is best explained by looking at rule 18 first. So we'll start there. And remember that principle is that the vessel for whom it may be easier to give way is the one which must give way. Rule 18 is a priority of vessel types. Vessels give way to all vessels above them in the list that's going to appear, except where Rule 9, Narrow Channels, Rule 10, TSS or Rule 13, Overtaking, require otherwise. First on the list is vessels not under command. This actually means that the vessel is incapable of manoeuvring at all, not that the captain isn't on board. And clearly, if it can't manoeuvre, it can't give way. Next on the list, and giving way to vessels not under command, is vessels restricted in their ability to manoeuvre. This might be laying, lifting or servicing of navigation marks, cables, pipes, dredging, surveying underwater ops, replenishing, transferring of persons, provisions or cargo while underway, um, aircraft carrier operations, launching and recovering aircraft, mine clearance or towing, which severely restricts either the towing or the towed vessel's ability to manoeuvre. Next on the list comes vessels constrained by their draft. This applies only to powered vessels and they must be severely restricted in their ability to deviate from their course in order to claim that they are vessel constrained by draft. They're in this position because although they must take particular care when they're manoeuvring, they can manoeuvre. Next comes vessels engaged in fishing where nets, lines or trawls restrict their ability to manoeuvre. Fishing vessels have no higher priority than any other power vessel when they're not engaged in fishing in this way. Below them comes sailing vessels underway. There are two questions that arise from this one. What's a sailing vessel and what does underway mean? A sailing vessel is a vessel that's moving with no mechanical propulsion operating. So if you have an engine running to charge your generator but the gearbox is in neutral, then you're sailing. Underway simply means you're not at anchor, made fast to the shore or aground. In other words, if you're drifting, you are underway. Depending on the wind direction relative to a sailing vessel, they may be restricted in their ability to turn. And that's the reason why sailing vessels are above power driven vessels in this list. Below sailing vessels come power driven vessels underway. And below power vessels come seaplanes on the water or wing in ground effect craft. These are a kind of cross between a boat and an aeroplane which fly very low with the wing in the ground effect caused by the surface of the sea. It can be seen from this list that every vessel gives way to all vessels for whom manoeuvring is more difficult. The seaplanes and wing and ground effect craft, they kind of an add on at the end really, but the principle does still hold good. We can apply the same principle to all the other rules between rule 12 and rule 18. Next, we're going to look at rule 15, which covers vessels that are crossing. The reason we're doing that next is it's a good way of explaining rule 16, which is the action by the give way vessel, and rule 17, which is the action by the stand on vessel. Rule 15 says that when two power driven vessels are crossing so as to involve a risk of collision, the vessel with the other on its starboard side shall keep out of the way and shall, if the circumstances admit, avoid crossing ahead of the other vessel. What this means is that the default avoidance manoeuvre is to turn to starboard, in other words, to pass behind the other vessel. Let's have a look at an example. Here we have a sailing vessel under power and a power boat on converging courses. The power boat has the sailing vessel on its port side and the sailing vessel has the power boat on its starboard side. The sailing vessel under power is therefore the give way vessel. The give way vessel must, under rule 16, take early and substantial action to keep clear. And under rule 15, it must avoid crossing ahead of the other vessel. Which means that it must take substantial action, which will be to turn to starboard to pass behind the other vessel 
or to significantly reduce speed. You may remember from part one of this video that where possible, a substantial alteration of course is the preferred course of action. The powerboat is the stand-on vessel, and under Rule 17 he must maintain course and speed, and he must be ready to do an avoidance manoeuvre if the give-way vessel is not taking appropriate action. If he makes an avoidance manoeuvre, he may not make a turn to port in order to avoid a vessel to port. So in other words, in this situation, he must turn to starboard or change his speed. Under the rules then, the standard resolution to this problem is for the sailing vessel under power to make a substantial turn to starboard in order to pass behind the powerboat. The alternative solution would be for the sailing vessel under power to significantly reduce speed or to stop so that the powerboat passes ahead of it. Rule 13 covers overtaking. Overtaking vessels must keep out of the way of the vessel being overtaken. Rule 13 covers overtaking in open water, not in a narrow channel. Overtaking vessels keep out of the way of the vessel being overtaken. You're overtaking if you're coming up upon another vessel in a direction more than 22 and a half degrees abaft the beam. In other words, if at night, you would only see the overtaken vessel's stern light. If in doubt as to whether you're overtaking, then you are overtaking and you must act accordingly. Subsequent alteration of bearing does not make the overtaking vessel become a crossing vessel. So you must keep clear until you are past and clear. In other words, until you've completely cleared the other vessel. Let's have a look at an example. Here we have a sailing vessel under power and we have three faster power boats approaching it. Which, if any of these vessels A, B and C, do you think are overtaking vessels? To find out, we've put a line across the beam of the sailing vessel and taken another line 22 and a half degrees abaft the beam. From this, it's clear that vessel A is clearly overtaking, vessel B is overtaking, and even vessel C, whose helmsman is exactly on that 22 and a half degree line, will be in doubt as to whether he's overtaking or not, so he is overtaking as well. As vessel C nears that sailing vessel under power, he will move ahead of that line 22 and a half degrees above the beam, but he stays an overtaking vessel because he started as one, so he must keep clear until he's well past. Rule 14 applies to vessels meeting head on. When two power driven vessels are meeting on a reciprocal or near reciprocal heading, in other words, so their courses involve a risk of collision. When that happens, each must alter course to starboard so that they pass on the port side of the other. And a head on situation exists if vessels see the other ahead or nearly ahead and by night could see the mast headlight in a line or nearly in a line and or both side lights by day if they observe the corresponding aspect of the other vessel and if in any doubt as to whether a head-on situation exists then it does exist and you must act accordingly. Here we have two power driven vessels in a near head-on situation. Looking at the vessel on the left first, the skipper's got to make a decision as to whether it's a head-on situation or whether it's a crossing situation. If he decides that it's a crossing situation, he has the other vessel on his port side and he would be the stand-on vessel. He would therefore maintain course and speed and he would have to be ready to make an avoidance manoeuvre if the give-way vessel is not taking appropriate action. He's also not allowed to turn to port to avoid a vessel to port and therefore his only possible actions are that he would possibly have to water course to starboard. The other vessel will have the oncoming vessel on its starboard side, so he will possibly think he's the give way vessel. He must therefore make an early and substantial action to keep clear under Rule 16. He must also avoid crossing ahead of the other vessel under Rule 15, and therefore his action would be to alter course to starboard. 
If he considers it to be head-on, then it's easy he will alter course to starboard. Whether the skipper on the right-hand vessel believes it's a crossing situation or a head-on situation, he will alter course to starboard. If the vessel on the left believed he was in a head-on situation, he too would alter course to starboard. So in this situation, the rules ensure that as long as one vessel sees the other, there will be no collision. Rule 12 covers sailing vessels. Many crew struggle with understanding this rule, but now we know it's all based on who has the more difficulty giving way, then we can easily work out why the rule is the way it is. Rule 12 says that if two sailing vessels are approaching one another so as to involve a risk of collision, one keeps out of the way of the other as follows. If each has the wind on a different side, the vessel with the wind on the port side keeps out of the way. If they have the wind on the same side, then the vessel to windward keeps out of the way of the vessel to leeward. And the vessel with wind on the port side, which cannot determine with certainty whether the other vessel to windward has the wind on the port or the starboard side, then it has to keep out of the way. And when we say windward, we mean the side opposite the mainsail, or for square rigged vessels, the side opposite the largest fore and aft sail. Let's have a look at some examples. Here we have two sailing vessels with their main sails on their starboard side, which means they're on a port tack. Because they're in a crossing situation, in other words, their courses are converging, the vessel to leeward must be closer hauled than the vessel to windward. Otherwise, they wouldn't be crossing. Therefore, the vessel to leeward has more difficulty in adjusting course than the vessel to windward. The simplest manoeuvre for a sailing vessel is to bear away, which means to turn away from the wind by a few degrees. The leeward vessel may have obstructions or shallow water which prevent it from bearing away. However, the windward vessel will always have the space between it and the leeward vessel in which to manoeuvre. For both of these reasons, the vessel to windward is less restricted in its ability to manoeuvre than the leeward, and so the windward vessel must give way to the leeward vessel. Whether the vessels are on a port tack or a starboard tack, the same rule applies. The windward vessel has least restrictions to manoeuvring, and therefore the windward vessel gives way to the leeward vessel. In this situation, the windward vessel would bear away, alter course to starboard, and pass behind the leeward vessel. If vessels are on a different tack, then the vessel on the port tack gives way to the vessel on the starboard tack. There's a very good reason why. Remember two things. First, the standard avoidance manoeuvre is to turn to starboard. And secondly, the vessel for whom it is easier to give way is the one which must give way. The vessel on the starboard tack might not be able to alter course to starboard if it's close hauled, as in this situation. In other words, if it's sailing as close as it can towards the wind. The vessel on the port tack, however, can always turn to starboard because it's bearing away from the wind. Therefore, the vessel with the port tack always gives away to the vessel on the starboard tack by bearing away to pass behind it. Here, the vessel on a port tack has a vessel to windward which is running downwind and therefore has his main sail out to one side and his head sail out to the other. From this head-on situation, it can be hard to identify which tack that windward vessel is on. If it was on a starboard tack, then in any case, it would be the stand-on vessel. In this case, it's on a port tack, but because it's running downwind, if it was to give way, it would have to alter course to port if it wanted to avoid a jibe. Therefore, the safest course of action is the way the rule is written. The vessel with the wind on its port side, seeing a vessel to windward and uncertain which tack it's on, alters course to starboard by bearing away and passes down the port side of the other vessel. Many sailors choose to run downwind with their mainsail on the port side and their headsail on the starboard side, the opposite to the way shown here, because that puts them on a starboard tack, which means they have minimised the requirement for them to manoeuvre and manoeuvring downwind is more difficult and risky than manoeuvring when head to wind. That is Colregs in a nutshell. I hope you found it useful. 
please do remember hit that subscribe button hit that like button and hit the bell icon if you want to be told when we next release a video these things all really help us to grow the channel look forward to seeing you again soon back on the boat cheat